This folktale is called Three Gifts. Long, long ago, there lived a very rich old man with three sons. Realizing the day of his last breath was just around the corner, he called his sons to his bed, bedside to relay his last wish. My loving sons, I am old and sick, but the, before the time for me to take my last breath, I want to tell you my last wish. Listen well to what I am about to tell you and make me happy by abiding by it. Abiding just means following the order or following the person's wish. As you know, we are the richest family in town. Don't fight over my estate. That means their belongings, the house, everything like that. Divide it equally amongst the three of you. Do not be greedy, work diligently, love and support one another, and live a peaceful life. A few days later, the elderly father died, leaving his great fortune to his three sons. No sooner had the funeral ended than the two oldest sons conspired, which means like kind of scheming together with each other to take a much larger, larger shares of their father's wealth, leaving all their, only a small portion for their youngest brother to live on. From now on, just as our father wished, let's keep working diligently, but seek our own fortunes separately, meaning they're not going to work together. They're all going to live their own lives. You may think it's unfair, but we too who are older soon have to marry and support families, so we need a much larger portion of the inheritance. You still have many years to make a fortune before you become old enough to marry and have a family, said the, two, the oldest brother to his youngest brother. The three brothers divided up their father's fortune amongst themselves exactly as the older two brothers had conspired, meaning schemed. The, bro the youngest brother accepted his older brother's decision without even a single complaint and moved out on his own with his share. He kept diligently working as his father had asked. The younger brother was not rich, but very generous and kind-hearted. He shared whatever he had with the poor and needy in town. As he shared his fortune with his neighbors, his fortune rapidly dwindled, meaning it was going away. He was spending up all of his money. He lived a very simple life, just like those needy people with whom he had been sharing his wealth. On the other hand, his two older brothers kept their large fortunes all to themselves, and their uh, fortune became larger and larger. They lived in a beautiful mansion, wore the most beautiful clothes, and covered their bodies with glittering gold jewelry. Their younger brother, in his ragged clothes, became an embarrassment to them. One day, the two older brothers spoke to their younger brother. You squandered all of your fortune. Look at your shabby appearance. We are sh too ashamed to call you our brother. For our sake, we want you to leave this town. Come back only when you are rich and worthy of us. The youngest brother became saddened at being forced out of his town by his own brothers. He left his hometown without any particular destination in mind. Walking all day, he became hungry and tired. While he was resting his two feet in a cool, clear stream of water, an elderly monk, which is similar to a priest, but a little bit different. An elderly monk with silvery hair and beard approached to cross the stream. There was no bridge and no stepping stones. The elderly monk's legs were shaky as he had a very large pack on his back. Please sit here and rest a while, rest a while elder, and let me carry your pack across the stream, said the youngest brother. After carrying the pack safely across the stream, he helped the elderly monk to cross. Thank you, young man, said the old monk. But the youngest brother did not stop there. He carried the monk's heavy pack all the way to the temple. The young man found that the old monk was the only occupant of a small but beautiful temple. There was no one to cook, wash clothes, or help with other tasks. Because he had no idea where else to go, the young man offered to stay and help the monk. The elderly monk gladly accepted his offer. As the months passed, the young man learned the Buddhist doctrines from the old monk, but he began to miss his brothers and his friends back in his hometown. Finally, he decided to go home. The monk brought out an old straw mat, a large dipper made of a gourd, and a pair of chopping sticks. Or chopsticks, my bad. I wish you, I could give you better ones, but these are the only things I can give as gifts. Take them with you. You might find them useful on your way. The young man gratefully accepted the elderly monk's meager gifts and hurried toward his hometown. He walked all day without eating anything. As dusk fell, he spread the monk's old straw mat and immediately fell into a sound sleep. It was dawn when he woke up from an amazingly restful sleep. He almost fainted from fright to find himself laying on a comfortable bed in a splendid room. He wondered if he was dreaming, but soon realized everything was real. He reached under the soft mattress to find the old straw mat beneath it. 
He, fought, he took out the gourd dipper the monk had gave him, gave him. Out of it poured all kinds of delicious food. His shaky hands tapped the chopsticks. Many maids, as beautiful as angels, suddenly appeared. Some started singing, and others started dancing to entertain him while he ate. Whatever the young man wished for came out of the gourd dipper. Naturally, he became very, very rich. He decided to hurry back to his brothers. Walking out of his beautiful castle, he saw a beautiful carriage with twelve horses waiting for him. He rode to the gate of his town, where he changed into his old ragged clothes and sent the horses and carriage back to his castle. He started walking on foot to his brother's home. Seeing him in his ragged clothes, the two older brothers became very displeased and gave him a cold reception. But, my very dear elder brothers, I wish to be allowed to live in the same town with me. Please let me stay, begged the young man. What go what's good about living in the same town? You're just an embarrassment to us as you were months ago. Go back to wherever you have been and seek your own fortune just as our father had wished, asked the older brothers. They, did not, they didn't even invite their younger brother into the house. Rejected by his brothers, the young man was very sad. The sun was already setting behind the western side of the mountain, and dusk started to cover over the town. He stopped on a nearby hillside and spread out the straw mat to sleep on. When he awoke from his restful sleep the next morning, he again found himself in a beautiful bedroom of another newly built castle. The next morning, his brothers saw a large new castle on the hillside and approached it out of curiosity. When they walked near the gate, the gate opened and the gatekeeper invited them in. When they learned that it was their own brother who had become so rich and how he had done so, they hurried back home. They put on a show of being very generous men and gave away all of their worldly possessions to the needy and hoped that the elderly monk would give them the same gifts. After their worldly possessions had been given away, they hurried, hurriedly traveled to the temple described by their brother. They pounded on the gate, but nobody answered. They walked into the temple ground. They still didn't see anybody. They looked for an elderly monk, but he was nowhere to be found. Days, weeks, months, but the monk never came back. They soon ran out of food and money. They had no home to return to and begged their way back to their younger brother's castle. Seeing his brothers approach the castle, the youngest brother ran up to them and welcomed them with his, war his arms wide open. He respectfully invited them in and shared all of his fortune with them. The older brothers were deeply touched by their younger brother's love. United again, the three brothers all lived happily ever after, just as the father had wished. <laughs>